Good morning, everybody. So three years ago, around this time, I was working in the White House, working closely with Grant Schneider, and we were in the midst of responding to the OPM breach. How many people in this room were directly affected by OPM? Raise your hands. Typical DC crowd, it's always a not insubstantial amount of folks. OPM really focused the mind. It focused the mind on the need for modernization because government IT is bedeviled by an overhang of legacy IT that is expensive to maintain and hard to secure. Um, it focused the mind on cloud, and we heard a lot about that this morning. Modernization and the cloud. It is clearly the way forward for government, and we are clearly in the midst of a generational change in how government does IT. At the same time, we've been at this cloud journey for a while. The federal government's cloud-first policy originated in 2011, so it's been seven, eight years. We're almost at a decade of going after this cloud vision of modernization. At the same time, I would argue that we're really still in the very early days, probably, in my view, only in around the second inning. And to just demonstrate how quickly this shift has happened and how recent, really, this shift is in the long scope of things, I want to remind people, OMBA 130, which is government-wide IT guidance, it was revised in the third quarter of 2016, only two years ago, 85-page document. The word cloud only shows up three times. In the White House IT modernization strategy, which came a year after that, fourth quarter 2017, the word cloud shows up 242 times. So if government IT professionals and cybersecurity professionals are getting a little bit of whiplash in terms of the change, it's not surprising. To reaffirm my point that we're only in the second inning or so of this journey to modernization in the cloud, I'll ask the audience, what percentage of government IT spend do most people in here think is spent on cloud? The number, by OMB self-reporting estimates, is only 2.5%. Market analysts think the OMB numbers are underreported. They put it at maybe 5%. That is still a fraction of where the private sector is in terms of cloud adoption. Most enterprises at around 25%, 20% of IT spend. And so in this discussion today, I want to talk about this journey to the cloud, why the adoption for all this talk for almost a decade is still slow and blocked. And I want to talk about that also in the context of cybersecurity. So while we have one trend of modernization through the cloud, we have a second huge background trend, and that is the continued complexity, the continued increase in cybersecurity risk. In a uh, May report out of the White House, they found that 71 of 96 agencies, 74% of those reporting, their cybersecurity programs are at risk or are high risk. And the fact that we still struggle on the cybersecurity front is not for a lack of effort. IT professionals and cyber professionals in the federal government have to take heroic efforts to do hygiene, to keep up with new requirements, new compliance, to keep up with new threats. But for the most part, there's a feeling of sort of running to stand still. And I think that's because of a number of factors. As I said before, legacy IT and the fact that 80 cents on every dollar goes towards operations and sustainment, starving innovation. It goes to the fact that there is a shortage of skilled human capital um, available to government. And that's a global shortage. It's not just a government shortage. It comes from the fact that the federal IT fabric, for all of our advancements with Einstein and continuous diagnostics and monitoring, it is still highly fragmented. A little bit of shared service here from DHS, some more tools uh, from CDM program, and a lot of sort of rolled your own projects on security uh, at the agency and department level. At the same time, there's something that I call the fog of more that's making things even more complex. What is the fog of more? It's the fact that in the next seven years, the number of IoT devices in the world are going to increase by three to fourfold to 75 billion IoT devices. It's based on the fact that data is increasing tenfold in the next seven years. And even though there's more data, more telemetry coming off of all these machines, there's data everywhere but cyber professionals are drowning in the data. They're still starved for insight. 
in the face of all this data. If you think about laying more requirements, more regulation, more compliance on top of that, again, it takes heroic effort for government IT professionals and cyber professionals to stay ahead. And as the threat continues to advance, it feels too often like we're falling behind. So what do we think about these two trends, modernization on the one hand and the continued need for cybersecurity on the other? How do these two trends relate? It turns out that one of the reasons that cloud adoption has been so slow is that perceptions of the security of cloud are the most significant impediment to cloud adoption. A survey by Goldman Sachs in 2018, 56% of respondents viewed security as the most significant blocker towards moving to cloud. The second most significant blocker was also security related, fears of data loss and leakage. The third most uh, biggest blocker was compliance and regulation. And usually that compliance and regulation have to do with security. So the top three blockers impeding the progress to cloud are all related to security. So the accepted wisdom and predominant perception is that the cloud creates security risk, risk that agencies need to address before they go to the cloud. But what if cloud didn't make your job harder? What if cloud instead could take things off the security professional's plate? What if cloud could simplify and streamline what, what they do? What if cloud could make the job of security professionals easier? And what if cloud could address many of the security gaps currently faced by government? Let's take a look at that. And to answer those questions, I want to focus on cloud capabilities provided by Google in six areas. Scale, supply chain, automation, data, access, and situational awareness. Government IT struggles with scale, automation, consistency. Google's cloud is a single global cloud fabric. It is the same cloud fabric that all of Google's products uh, rides on. We have eight products with over a billion users each. Think about it, Gmail, YouTube, Maps, Search. All of that runs on the same cloud that Google uses for its own products that we provide to our customers. Again, we provide a global cloud fabric that is certified for FedRAMP uh, FedRAMP moderate, and that is certified at the DOD levels for IL-2. With those eight products with a billion users, we are one of the largest, if not the largest, target on the globe for malicious activity. And harking back to the Amazon comments earlier, we do this at scale, and we do it very well. We filter 10 million spam and malicious emails every minute. We scan 694,000 web pages for malicious code every minute. We protect 3 billion devices from URLs with malicious content every day. And our network, our global network, and our infrastructure has 1,000 times the bandwidth of the largest DDoS attack ever. What else does the government struggle with? They struggle with scale. Google Cloud operates at massive scale. The government struggles with supply chain security. There is a raft of legislation. There are pending executive orders on supply chain security for us at Google. We address supply chain security by focusing on end-to-end -end provenance, a provable chain of control through our entire infrastructure. We reduce our dependence on third parties and reduce an, uh, the unverifiable trust surface by purpose building our own machines and our own chips. Furthermore, we take a zero trust approach to our network. Even though we built our own machines, we don't trust them. What we do is using something called the Titan chip. We affirm the firmware, the hardware, the BIOS, and all processes running our network through this proprietary chip. On the automation side, I want to point out, people remember Spectre and Meltdown. These were chip level vulnerabilities that threatened uh, the security of data and were present on billions of chips. Google's team of 900, 900 security researchers discovered this flaw. We worked with uh, industry partners. We found a solution. And in our global fabric, we implemented a, a patch and an update with no disruptions at all to customer service. Automation, scale, a 900-person security team, CapEx of $30 billion in the last three years on our own infrastructure. This presents an enormous opportunity to partner with industry to solve some of the security challenges. Now, in addition to automation, in addition to scale, in addition to as I said, focus on supply chain security. We also protect data in ways that we think are unique. 
Only 16% of federal agencies have achieved the government-wide target for encrypting data at rest. At Google, anything in our cloud is automatically. You don't have to opt in. Everything is automatically encrypted at rest. And every file, every document is broken into a 1,000 pieces. Each one of those pieces is encrypted with a key. And each one of those keys is re-encrypted with another key. Customers can manage their keys. We can manage your keys. But we take a unique approach to security so you don't end up accidentally having public-facing storage buckets that are unencrypted. You don't have pools of clear text of sensitive information sitting out there. That also next brings me to access. We use multi-factor authentication with all of our users so that you are authenticated individually, your machine is authenticated, and for you to have access to any pieces of the data that is fully encrypted, security and identity are paramount. In addition, we implement data loss prevention. Uh, by default, so you can see where sensitive data is moving. You can see if you are leaking sensitive data. We provide security dashboards that let you see who is touching my data, what workloads am I running, um, and this also feeds into the notion of visibility around your environment. Next, I want to talk about common operating picture, situational awareness. Again, our security dashboards provide end-to-end -end visibility. What's running, it, running in your cloud? Who's touching it? What's the disposition of it? Are there any anomalies? And the anomaly capabilities, the anomaly detection capabilities are in, in our cloud are powered by the observations that Google gets from the fact that it sits on the largest private backbone in the world, a backbone that carries at any given time between 25 and 40% of the world's internet traffic. So, and in addition, I'll add, we have a customer, New York City Cyber Command, that is using Google Cloud at scale to do log analysis off of hundreds of thousands of endpoints and for hundreds of thousands of end users. It's dramatically changing how they get insight and situational awareness, which is critical for cybersecurity. So it's interesting to me that for all the security capability in cloud, that security has been the biggest impediment. It reminds me of the quote, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the rhyme of the ancient mariner, water, up, water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. So I think we need to change our thinking about security. And I'll close on this. Looking at the new national cybersecurity strategy, there's a line in there that caught my attention. It said, the responsibility to secure federal networks falls squarely on the federal government. I agree with that on the one hand. On the other hand, we are well beyond the point where government can do everything it uh, can think can, well, well, excuse me, we're well beyond the point where government can do everything it needs to do on its own. Government can't hire its way out of the problem because of the labor shortages we talked about before. They will never spend their way out of the problem. Additional compliance and rules will not solve the problem. They'll just put more on the security professional's job jar. Adding more tools will not solve the problem. The average enterprise has 200 cybersecurity tools implemented already. So what we need is a game changer to simplify, to streamline, to increase productivity, increase nimbleness, speed, and scale. We at Google believe that thing is cloud. So when it comes to security, cloud should not be viewed as a risky end state. The cloud itself can be an enabler, and the cloud can help government modernize and transform how it does security. So instead of moving more slowly to the cloud because of security concerns, I think it is critical that security should be a reason for government to adopt cloud faster. Google is here to help. Thanks very much.